Welcome back to the 9 a.m. You know, Women's World Cup's going on right now. Big event. Uh, U.S. ladies expected to do their thing. Someone who did do their thing more than one time. Jackie, join a cursey in the house. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Tim. It's always I, great. I thought you were going to wear your, your... I know. I didn't get the memo. Okay, oh, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I'll start spanking. We got spangled. the blue on. We got yeah, the blue. Yeah, we yeah, matching. Yeah, we're coordinating. Yeah. All right, I, first I got to ask you, with the Women's World Cup going on right now, these ladies, they're expected to win. Um, they're representing their country. You've done all of those things. You've been in that position with the Olympics. What, what is that feeling like when you're representing your country and everyone's expecting you to, to do it? You talk about pressure, the anxiety, but they have a really great support team around them. And then also with the leadership, with some of the veteran players being there, because it's a young team, yeah. but they're excited. And that's what's exciting about, you know, the team that's that's young because even though all the noise but they have a way of blocking it out but then also the veterans will come in and calm them down but so far they've been doing really well and and i think that they expect that of themselves yeah because if you listen to them it's like no we come here to win so that says a lot you you did you competed several times in the olympics how did you block it all out what was your game plan you know, my game plan was to just focus on what I was prepared to do. And I didn't have to deal with social media, you know, but you know, you have the news clip, but I didn't have to read the newspaper, I didn't have to turn on the television. But then a lot of them either block out what's being said on social media, rally around each other. And that's the great thing about the team, yeah. the team support, because if someone is feeling down, you, you're there to lift that person up. In track and field a lot of time, it is a team sport, but you know when you go to the start line if you're it's ready or you. not. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell me this, did it get easier the second, third, and fourth time? Or um, like, did you like being the first time where nobody knew and I can just make, make a splash? Or was there pressure with having to repeat? Wow, I think that uh, the inexperience the first time around, uh, allow yourself to make mistakes. Yeah. But then the expectation, yeah. uh, what you expect from yourself and the expectation of others, that's what you have to balance. And that's what you know the national team is uh, going up against because the expectation is that, oh, they are supposed to win. And even though the game is, big, is bigger, you know, more, more teams are in it and more women are being uh, exposed to soccer. And, yeah. and but I, I, I think we have a great team. And uh, again, I think finding that team of support yeah. to keep you calm and, and block out the noise and focus on what they need to do. They've been there, they got veterans on there that, that's going to help them, but yeah. then also, I think they're going to take it all away. You're gearing up for a big event. Uh, it's September 9th. It's the St. Jude's uh, Children, Research Children's Hospital. 5K walk run. It's going to be taking place on the 9th, starting at Ballpark Village. Uh, how excited are you about this? You know, I'm excited, you know, to be able to lend my name to what St. Jude do for so many families, you know, and when you're talking about uh, a cure and the work that uh, they do across the nation, but then having this uh, 5K walk run started right here in St. Louis, and for me to be a part of it, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to cheering the people on and telling them to come out and have some fun. And also the goal is to raise about $350,000. So, you know, that's the goal. So it is a, a lofty goal, but I think it could be done. St. Jude's uh, Children's Research uh, Hospital, they do so much. I mean, we see the stories each and every year. It's just amazing the work they're doing. Just a few things I want to point out that I, that I was learning by reading about them. Uh, in 1962, childhood cancers were deemed incurable with an overall survival rate of 20%. Mm -hmm. Today, ch ch childhood cancer survival rates more than 80% in the U.S. Right. I mean, that's, that's research. That's work that St. Jude's doing to make a difference and, and work towards a, a cure for this thing. You can never be at ease. Right. You know, no. but the burden of not worrying about a bill, yep. you know, transportation, the travel, you know, that St. Jude takes care of all of that, you know, with their treatment. And that's just pretty uh, a blessing and uh, and really says a lot about St. Jude. We saw our friend uh, that we had join us uh, as host for a day, Drew Patchen, who had an experience with St. Jude Hospital with uh, mm -hmm. his brain tumor, and his family just raved about the experience they had at St. Jude. I mean, it's, it's one thing to, to, to just be able to pour into these families uh, and support them in every way possible. Yes, and that's why it's very important on September 9th, everyone come, come out. You know, again, 
The goal is to raise 350000 They have over 120 some teams. So come on, let's get on the St. Jude team and let's make this happen. There you go. It is St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. 5K walk run. It is taking place on the 9th of September. And you got to be at Ballpark Village to be in the right place. Yes. Go get them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, keep it right here. We got more Fox 2 News at 9 a.m. coming your way. Champ. Champ. <laughs>